Hello there and welcome to a very mech video I guess. We've got a lot of mechs to cover today, not only the new Hulk and Thanos mech, but I'll also be taking a look at the slightly older Wolverine mech. You can see the building techniques for the Wolverine mech are vastly different to Hulk and Thanos, so it'd be a great video to just review each of them individually and then compare how the different models bring each mech to life. Now, as well as these three mechs, I obviously have all my other mechs, my Boba Fett and Stormtrooper that I have improved. I don't think I've shown off my Boba Fett, so perhaps I'll have to show off all the upgrades to my mechs in its own video, as today's will definitely be long enough. But I also have the Trooper, and I did have Vader, which I originally rebuilt into the Emperor and Luke, but I have picked up another Vader on my outings. Go check out my recent Lego store video as that was when I picked up the Vader mech. You won't see the Vader mech as that's a part of a bigger video to come. But I do now have a Vader mech to stand alongside the other Star Wars ones. Today's focus is going to be on Marvel mechs. I think we'll start with the Wolverine mech as that is already built. And then I'll build each of the others and review them and compare them all at the end. So... It's going to be a very long video, but I've got so many other ideas I want to bring to you. And as I'm posting daily, it enables me to make these longer videos and get my ideas out there quicker. So I hope you enjoy this new style of videos and are not too overwhelmed with all the content I'll be making. But let's look at the Wolverine mech. So the Wolverine mech is mostly built using these ball joints you can see here on the arms and the legs and... Whilst it is quite good and definitely enables it to be posed in many different ways compared to the modern day mechs. It does also mean that they're a bit more fragile and especially when they're standing up. If you don't have it balanced right, it can just fall over very easily. Now, with these mechs, it does mean you can put them in very unnatural positions. Like you can have Wolverine doing the splits, for example, which isn't exactly something you'd want to pose him in or... Perhaps you would and want to have a few of these goofy looking mechs on your shelf. But I do like the idea that Lego have taken to upgrade them. And especially with this thumb element here. I did have two of the older mechs for Miles Morales and Thor. And I think both of them use this for the whole hand. These bigger droid pieces. If we take a look here. You can see that they're much bigger than the pieces that are used in the Star Wars mechs. And for this, for the thumb and all the three fingers, does look very weird as I don't think the mechs are that big. So the piece is definitely a bit oversized. And the modern mechs do use a slope brick, which definitely looks a bit better than having this enormous thumb. But in rebuilding Wolverine, I could not find his other claw, which I only have from the Wolverine mech. So I will definitely be keeping an eye out for it. But it's quite nice that he comes with the three claws out of his mech as well as the minifigure which these mechs are great for getting minifigures it's pretty much the only reason i bought the new hulk one as i didn't have a hulk for my collection but at the time this wolverine minifigure was amazing and actually it does still hold up quite well you can see you've got the face which the hairpiece would go on I don't think this set came with a hairpiece, much like some of the other mechs that come with the helmets but don't give a hairpiece for the character. But if you did have a spare hairpiece, you could use it. And of course, got the white goggles for when the helmet's on. And it's a very simple minifigure. It was great to see Wolverine return, especially with all the 97 stuff, like his giant 18 plus claw set, which again was a very questionable set, wasn't the most popular. But for a first Wolverine minifigure, this is great. And if we take a look and compare it to the new CMF, well, newish CMF that's about a month old already, you can see just how much of an improvement it is. It's actually a brighter yellow on the new one, which does look a lot more like Wolverine. But the torso has stayed roughly the same with a few updates to the printing. And of course, on the back, there is quite a bit more detail, which is quite funny to say because on the new one, it's actually a lot simpler printing it just gets it across so much more effectively and you can see the arms have been printed to include a little blue sleeve and the hairs of wolverine's arms and though the mold for the helmet is the same it does mean that this helmet is unique to the minifigure and i actually think that this one with the mech 
is an exclusive helmet because I don't remember seeing Wolverine in it at any point. Perhaps they've just reused an old one, but if this is a new helmet mold, then it is an exclusive piece as going forward, we're probably more likely to see the newer color. But the legs are also a big upgrade, which I think is the biggest difference between the two characters as not only do we have the double molded legs, but we also have that side of the leg printing that is so nice to see on loads of minifigures nowadays. So I guess if you've got the CMF, you could put Wolverine in the mech. But for now, I'm going to leave him to the side and use the minifigure that came in the mech as we're not seeing any of that printing. So we might as well use the color correct version. And taking a closer look at some of the detail, you can see they've included hinges to get some bricks on the side just to give this mech some size. And the yellow boots actually are on the newer minifigure. So perhaps you could get all of these pieces in a brighter yellow and create a mech for the new CMF. But I feel like everything has been said about this. It is a pretty decent mech, but I definitely prefer how the newer ones look as you can just see all of the ball joints that are used to create this mech. And even the back is a bit chunky where it comes out so far just to support the minifigure and the arms. Perhaps they could have flattened this out a little. With the newer mechs, obviously we've got that new back element. I've bricked this one out myself as this is the mech that I'm building for tomorrow's Ahsoka video. So a bit of a spoiler alert here. But let me know in the comments if you can guess what this mech is going to be. And the back plate for this part does only go one stud behind the pieces with the ball joints. Unlike the Wolverine mech here that does go a total of four studs back. That's more than a brick. And then just to be capped off, I feel like they definitely could have made this a lot slimmer. So perhaps that's an upgrade I'd make for it. But let's go and take a look at one of the other mechs we've got left to build. And that mech is the Thanos mech. These are new. They come out, I believe, in September. They might have come out a bit more before that, but this one interested me in particular as not only does it come with a blue chest piece, unlike all the blacks that we get mostly with Star Wars and the Thor and Miles Morales one, but also this mech and Hulk come with a different body to the Star Wars mechs and it's even different than the original Wolverine mechs, for instance, as I believe this is the only way, perhaps the Ninjago waves, that we see this body piece. So it's cool to see that LEGO have decided to stop using that in favour of more of a brick-built torso. However, I'm very interested to see how this works for the mechs. So I'm going to get to building this and I'll see you once it's complete. And taking a look quickly at this torso piece, it does seem to be able to be built with bricks. So perhaps that's something I can do in the future. But the hardest part would be this angle here as it probably needs to be a bit more bricked up. And that might confine around the minifigure and make it a bit hard to stand the minifigure up. But it does look like Thanos will be standing on the studs, which does mean if the mech goes upside down, he won't fall off, unlike the newer Star Wars mechs. Now that I've built the Thanos mech, let's take a closer look. First off, that torso piece does look quite nice, but the characters are sitting down and that is perhaps why the backs are so chunky, much like that Wolverine mech. There hasn't been much done to improve how far it sticks out the back. Now, in this case, Thanos does have massive arms that are twice as big or twice the size of the other mechs. So it doesn't look too badly. However, when you put this front bit up, just how thick that mech is. These would work great as a big fig, but I think that is even too big for one of them. And that is why I picked up the Thanos and Hulk one, as they are both bigger characters than Lego. And whilst a mech may be too big, it does lead to some very creative designs when you're building scenes around them. And I just think it's great to have bigger characters in mech size format. Now, they could have perhaps been bigger. I mean, comparing it to the old Wolverine mech that uses the ball joints, they are slightly taller than the older mechs. So 
I suppose for Thanos and the Hulk, whilst I don't have any of the others, they are the biggest mechs. And they're probably about the same size as the new Star Wars ones by the looks. But I'm interested to see if we'll get more Marvel mechs like this next year or if they'll improve them and make them closer to the Star Wars mechs. As I still think the Star Wars mechs are my preferred line though. I definitely like what they've done for this hand over here. Given Thanos the Infinity Gauntlet, it would have been nice if we could have detached it and given him a hand instead. Though this mech has some pretty cool functions. These fingers, I'm really not sure what I feel about them. They are very odd, perhaps because I'm used to the other oversized elements we've got in the previous Marvel mechs and the smaller, more nice looking ones of the recent Star Wars mechs. But I don't know. I don't think I'd like to see these in the new year. They're a bit creepy. They're a bit too long for the fingers. I like the stubby elements that we get with the Star Wars mechs instead of these. And there's a few bits like these bricks up here are a bit loose there's nothing holding it down and again does just make the mech feel that much bulkier than if we take them off and you've just got the blue chest plate so there's definitely improvements that can be made and again i'll do that in my video with the wolverine mech however i have seemingly put the bottom of the torso round the wrong way and it's not too much a problem because of that hip piece which does just swivel round I mean, I'll still have to fix up the legs, but I haven't seen that in a mech before. I mean, none of the Star Wars ones have it and none of the older Marvel ones have it either. And that is purely because of this chest piece. Now, what it's done is instead of the minifigure standing up and the legs coming down to about here, it's made them sit down in that block that does have a Technic hole. And now it's got a Technic pin in the bottom, which slots into the bottom half of the torso and... I think it's pretty unnecessary for the mechs as I don't really see an example where you'd need it to twist as I guess I just don't display mine like that. And especially when you've got the locked legs and the locked arms. I think what Lego have tried to do here is give it another moving part so you can sort of swivel the hips and get Thanos stretching ready to take down the Avengers I guess. But I'm happy it's something that hasn't come over to Star Wars. It's just very weird and yeah. I'm just not a fan of it. Overall, the mech's pretty nice. I really like what they've done with the arms here, bulking them out with this new sort of lilac, with these neat lilac sort of pieces that match Thanos' skin colour. And even the minifigure, again, it's a bit more basic than we've seen with the recent Marvel CMFs. But it captures Thanos very well. It's a very well detailed torso with lovely back printing. And even the face has Thanos struggling. And perhaps a more angrier expression than we got him in the Guardian's advent calendar. Which is where I got my first Thanos. And we'll be taking a look at a few other of my Marvel minifigures later. But overall you don't even need to sit Thanos down and attach him. Because there's no real wiggle room there. He might wiggle a bit back and forth. But he's definitely not coming out of there. As he's locked in with this bluer piece. And yeah I'm not really a fan of this hip piece. But... It definitely does look fun and adds another bit of playability that perhaps you'll make more use of than I do. And taking a look at this Infinity Gauntlet before we push Thanos to the side, you can see that to the side it comes with four of each Infinity Stone just beside me here. And one of each fits on this giant glove which I believe we have seen with the big fig before but it's very nice to get with the mech as of course to reenact the Thanos snap. From Infinity War and overall this mech is a solid mech you can't really fault it the only thing I'd have done differently is this movable hit piece but I'm still playing around with it it's fun enough that it doesn't make much of a difference and I suppose what you could do is have Thanos do the splits and create a helicopter with his legs if he needs to get away very quickly but it's just another play feature Lego have added Again, it's not necessarily an 18 plus mech, not meant for display. So if you don't like the hit piece like me, you can get rid of it and stay tuned for that video as I'll be making upgrades to all of these mechs. But now it's time to take a look at the final mech we're building today. And that is, of course, the Hulk mech. Now, I'm excited for this as I don't have a Hulk figure, so... That is my real grab for this. But also, the hands are different. Again, it's got that different torso. So I'm intrigued to see how this works with the rest of the build. So I'll open this up and I'll start the review once it's built.
And now that the Lego Hulk mech is built, there's only a few more steps to do with this column that we see Hulk waving around on the box art. But the mech is pretty sizable even when compared to the Thanos mech that we just built. And it's actually quite a good technique, this piece here, as there's bars all up the side of the three columns, we just clip the middle part to Hulk's hand and that enables him to hold this piece without it slipping or trying to wedge it in the hand itself. The only problem is because of these green arm pieces, there's not much he can do with it. He can't really get a good swing and his hands are definitely huge compared to all the other elements we've had. Even the droid hands that I complained about earlier, these fingers are huge. They don't really close properly either, which dependent what you're trying to do, I mean, he can still do a thumbs up decently well. It just looks like he's curving all his fingers. So it's not terrible and you can have this pole held in either of the hands just on this black clip just here. The mechs are definitely all unique. I didn't mention with the Thanos mech or even the Wolverine mech, but those of you that collect mechs, both Marvel or Star Wars, will know that the torsos of each and even the belt for Wolverine are exclusive printed pieces. They're not stickers in any shape or form. So it's nice to be getting printed tiles with these mechs as they only tend to be around a tenner. So they're definitely fairly cheap and one of the cheapest sets you can actually pick up alongside the brickheads. And in my opinion, because you're getting a minifigure with each of these mechs, it just makes it that much more worth it than buying the brickheads. And we'll look at that Hulk minifigure in a minute because I want to look at the legs and just show you that they've used two of these locked knee joints to form the thicker legs, which is quite cool. And even the Thanos mech, I don't remember if I said, but the leg pieces are actually flipped so that the studs are facing inwards in order to get the legs to close a lot more than all of the Star Wars mechs and even the Hulk mech legs can because there's always quite a big gap. But I guess Thanos just has better posture than anyone and the designers really wanted to show it. But again, Hulk can swivel so I guess he can really throw the building quite far. But I'll definitely be upgrading the arm bits to give it a bit more movement and I really do think they should replace these pieces with hinges in all the mechs to come. I'm going to be very interested to see if the spinners for Ninjago do get replaced with mechs, obviously that is just speculation from me at the minute and I don't actually really have anything to back that up because I don't follow the Ninjago rumours. However, if we do get Ninjago mechs in the January wave or even any Marvel ones, I'll be interested to see what upgrades they have as every year Lego definitely do something to the mechs and even the Marvel ones from this year are still quite different to the Star Wars ones as they don't have them hip pieces in Star Wars so I'd definitely love to see some hinge pieces in the arms just to give us a bit more movement and I'm curious when I upgrade this mock if the weight of this big brick here will mean that the hinge pieces don't work as well as they do for the Star Wars mechs where they're only holding a lightsaber or a blaster so that'll be something I'm interested with when I upgrade these mocks which is going to be another video I feel like I've definitely talked enough for today but before we go I'd like to take a look at this Hulk minifigure. This is the first Hulk minifigure I'm getting, so I don't have anything to compare it to, though the printing is really good, especially with the muscles on the back and, of course, his abs. Hulk does actually have a dual-sided face, so he's got a much happier expression on one side and then quite an angry one for when he's smashing around and throwing the parts of the building. And he does have this hairpiece, which is less like the Bruce Banner of the MCU and reminds me more of the Hulk from the Incredible Hulk movie, which is a nice reference if that's why Lego have done it. And he's got the dual molded legs, purple and green, which are on the Builder minifigure or at least on Pick a Brick on Lego's website. So if you don't have the dual molded legs and instead have a printed shorts from an old Hulk minifigure, you don't have to buy this mech, but can just order the legs off the Pick a Brick. Taking a quick look at my slab of Marvel minifigures, this is the most of them, excluding any of the ones from the recent CMF, but I now have Black Widow, Captain America, Thor, Iron Man and the Hulk, so hopefully I can pick up a Hawkeye with the new CMF when I'm hunting for Agatha. You have to wait and see when I pick up the new CMFs, 
as so far I have the Wolverine I showed you earlier, both Mr. Knight and Moon Knight and Hawkeye from her show. So it would definitely be good if I can get a few more of these minifigures and there is a trip to the Lego store I've got planned coming up. So stay tuned for that as of course it will be the first time we see the UCS Venator in an actual Lego store. And after I've upgraded these mechs, I will be building a mech for the Sentinel. This headpiece did come in the Wolverine CMF and it's a bit battle scarred. So I'll be looking to implement that into the mech itself. And of course you have the mech for tomorrow's Ahsoka video. It is the final week of the Ahsoka mocks. So I'll be showcasing all of my Ahsoka mocks from the last four weeks, as well as talking about a few sets that I want to see in the new year. So I hope you enjoyed this longer video. There are plenty more longer videos to come as I just have so many ideas to put out there and especially when I'm upgrading these and showing off how you build all the individual parts. It could take quite some time. So definitely stay tuned for that. Leave a like if you liked the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on more mech content. And of course reviews and other stuff. But may the bricks be with you always.